Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today what we'll do is we'll take a look at some adding some additional cameras to our Home Assistant installation. So this is not going to be your typical IP camera adding that into your Home Assistant installation. There's a lot of content around that already, and a lot of people shows you the quality of the uh, specific camera systems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my existing camera system. So I still have these old analog cameras but their quality is still fine for my use case and I don't see the point of trying to replace my entire system where I could just replace one or two components instead and then upgrade that to work with Home Assistant instead of replacing all the cameras which I still see works fine and will work out way cheaper in the long end for me. But with that said, let's go in and take a look. There we go. So we're back in the Home Assistant installation. As you can see, um, this is the uh, backup one that I use usually to show you guys how to set up stuff after I've already did it on mine. However, in this case, I'll just quickly explain to you. I have a very old analog system. Well, not that old, but about three or four years old. But the camera quality is still good. And I really wanted to just add it to my Home Assistant installation. But the problem with that was the fact that the... DVR or the NVR system. It's a cheap Chinese brands thing. So they will have those custom firmware and a lot of them don't support specific protocols. And I've tried multiple ways adding that in, even doing a bunch of reshoots trying to find if there's any way of adding those in. And at the end of the day, I just gave up and decided what if I just go in and just replace that specific unit? So all my cameras already installed. All I'll need to do at the end of the day is just uh, pull out the existing DVR or NVR combo and then plug in the new one uh, that supports the OnVIF protocol. So that's one thing you're going to look at. So if you're like me, you still have cameras, it may be analog and you're happy with the quality, but it's a bit older or you're struggling to find a way of inputting that information into your Home Assistant installation. What I did was I went online, I searched for the cheapest OnVIF DVR or NVR system I could find. And once we have the OnVIF support, we can go in and add that to Home Assistant. Now, as you can see, I do have some pictures showing you just me replacing the old one with the new one. It's a Hikvision Turbo, I think. So a Hikvision uh, Turbo DVR. It's the cheapest one I could have found. And trust me, it would have been a lot more expensive replacing all the cameras instead of just replacing that one DVR. I think it's like less than $100 or like $80 or something just for that. And I can connect that up to all of my existing cameras. So no need to install and uh, lay additional power lines or PoE lines. Everything's just ready to go. I can just plug it in and then set it up to work with Home Assistant. With that said, let's quickly go in and take a look how to set this up in Home Assistant itself. Now, as you can see, once I've did that, I plugged everything in, the installation sets up good. The first thing that we need to do is, once we're ready, we plugged everything in onto that DVR. Now, this is going to depend on each of your different configurations. With the one that I'm using, as you can see, we have I already have it open. So, what you'll do is you'll go to the homepage. I know Hikvision, most of them usually have the same interface, so you should be good on that. You can log in. Uh, this username and password you set up when you install the DVR for the first time on the system itself. But once you have that set up, we can log in here. It'll give you the option to play back all the existing, so it gives you a live view. We're not interested in that at the moment. What we're looking for is the configuration right here. So if I click on configuration, we go down to the network option but here, and then you'll see there's an advanced settings option just below it. So if we click on advanced settings, we have integration protocol listed right here. And if we click on there, you'll see we have that option that says enable on with. So we can go ahead and enable that. Once we have that enabled, we need to make sure we also add in a user. So I'm going to quickly add a user in here just for test. There we go. And now I've added in that user in there. So now this should be enabled. If I hit save, it may ask you to reboot or restart the system once you've enabled on with. But once everything's plugged in, we should be ready to go and take a look in Home Assistant. So 
there we go. So back in our Home Assist installation. To add those cameras, we've already configured everything on here. We have OnBuff enabled. All we'll need to do is, uh, we don't even need to remember this. Once we have OnBuff enabled, Home Assistant should detect it by itself. However, if it does not, uh, we can go in and just click on Home Assistant, go to our configuration all the way down to the bottom, click on Integrations right here. Click on Add a Device right behind my camera, and then we search for Unbuff in here. So right there, we selected Unbuff. We'll say Submit because we want to enable that. Let's just scan our network to see if there's any Unbuff devices. As you can see, there's quite a few listed in here. What I'll do is I'll select the one that's related to my specific DVR. I'll select it, hit Submit, and it's going to ask me for that username and password. So I'll just type that in real quick, hit submit, and that should add that cameras to our system as entities. Easy as that, now we have all those cameras listed. Uh, we can hit finish right here. And if we look right here, you'll see it shows us we have one device and four entities and it shows us all the cameras that is available. Now, one thing to do to keep in mind is in some cases, some of these gets disabled for some reason. So uh, I did add a few of them and some of them just disables it. So just make sure in your entities, if you click on it, just make sure they are enabled and not listed as a disabled device. Uh, I'm not sure why I did that. I think uh, some of them offers a encoding option, which reduces the quality over the Unbuff stream. But just make sure all the entities is enabled and you will be able to add that to your home assistant. Now, a cool feature about this is you have your DVR separate from your entire home automation system. So all it is, that's still recording, that DVR is functioning 100% like it would. The only difference is it's also now working and Home Assistant, and you'll be able to view that cameras. To use it, what we'll do is we'll go to Overview here real quick. We can edit the interface, so edit dashboard, hit the plus sign right here, and then if we scroll a bit down, we see we have a picture glance option. I'll use this. I'm not going to include any sensors. I just need the camera itself. So right here, you see it shows us all the all four of those cameras. So I can just select the one I'd like to view. If I'm happy with that, I can name it. So just give it a name if I need to. Hit save, and now it'll have that listed in here. So you click on it to open up a video feed. That will play the video of from the camera itself to here. There we go. Okay, so we're back in my Home Assistant installation. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you guys real quick the automation that I've created that will, when we receive, a, that will send us a picture or a photo of a specific event or when we want to trigger that. So if we go into our configuration right here, in, uh, not integrations, uh, configuration, automations, the very last one I have in here is test notification. It's just one that I've played with. So in here, obviously you give it a name. Once you have your name in there, you need to add in a trigger. Now this is going to depend on a lot of things, but usually in uh, it'll be like a doorbell or if you have motion detected you want the system to notify you saying listen um, there's motion detected but you also want it to include a image or a photo so but the trigger is just going to be that what is going to trigger this notification in this case i set mine to a binary sensor which is called ring which is a doorbell so if your doorbell is being pressed it'll trigger the notifications or the information that i listed have listed below so there's multiple ways of setting this up, guys. So um, with HickVision or a lot of companies, you have a specific address. You can just use that address directly. However, going about it, a more universal approach would be is once we have that listed as a camera in Home Assistant itself, the most universal way would be for us just to take a screen grab, so a screenshot of that camera, and then trigger a additional option that will send us that image. So the way it's set up right here, I have in the action, I have call service. <coughs> then in the service, I selected camera snapshot, meaning that I need to take a snapshot of the camera. So in here, I selected camera snapshot. Then just below it, we have 
selected the actual camera we want to take that snapshot of. So obviously I have a bunch of cameras in here. The one you're looking for, so you select the camera you want to take the snapshot of, so you select that one. And then in the service data, and I'll leave this down in the description below as well. Um, we are going to create a file, so we need to give it a name and also tell it where it needs to save that file. In my case, I'll call it file name. I want it listed in the config www then cctv snapshots and called front.jpg. Obviously, you can name this differently. Uh, if you want to have all your snapshots saved in the same folder, all you'll need to do is you'll just need to rename the actual camera uh, that you are calling it for. So you can even call this channel one, for example, and that means it's a snapshot of channel one. I'm going to leave this as is for now. Then what I did was I added in a delay of five seconds, just in case for some reason something happens and it doesn't run these actions in order. And I need to know that it takes this snapshot and it saved it to that location before it sends me that snapshot or it may send me an old snapshot that's no longer active or the last one that was saved in there. So that's why I add in a quick delay. So I add an additional action called delay, just add a delay of five seconds. And then we set up the notification or the motion, uh, the notification for Telegram to send us that actual photo. So in here we have call service selected, Telegram bot send photo. Again, guys, I have a video showing you how to set up Telegram for notifications. Uh, you should see a card up to the top that will show you how to add Telegram and receive notifications on that. In the service data, we have captioned this just the name of the message that will come through. Mine is just motion test. And then we need to tell Telegram what file it needs to send us. Obviously, I'm literally just copying the file name right here because I wanted to send us that specific file. And that should be it. So now we have that automation set up. Every time someone presses the doorbell, it should trigger the... Uh, the action so it'll cause a snapshot to be taken of this specific camera it'll save it in this location with the file name and then it'll wait five seconds and then send a telegram message with that specific file name that was just saved in there now obviously each time this is going to take a snapshot it's going to replace the old one so you don't have to worry about running out of space or anything it will replace the old one because we have the exact same file name in here obviously you have your separate recorder that will record that information but once ready we can go in and click on execute right here and that should trigger that after about five seconds we should see a message come through on telegram there we go so as you can see it did take that we can do this multiple times and you'll see it sends waits five seconds and then it sends us that message in telegram there we go There we go guys, that's going to be it for this one. As always, if you guys do have any questions or you do get stuck, uh, feel free to ask down below. I would try to assist as much as I can. Uh, there's a lot going on at the moment, so it's really hard for me to keep up with everything. But I do try to reply to as many of you as possible. Um, as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day and see you again soon. Cheers guys. No.